Good morning out there in the crypto world. This morning, real quick, let's take a brief look at the countdown is in 55 minutes to be able to sign up on the Freedom 5 for the 5G Helium Hotspot. Yesterday, I know I came down um, kind of hard on Helium and the whole Dish Network uh, Agreement Alliance. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I was asking for more information on this. What's it gonna be? Is this gonna be a competitor? Um, that's still not really clear. However, I think it's clear now uh, how the dishes are going to be set up by Dish Network and that there is still an opportunity for us as the little people or the people's network to be able to participate. Let's talk about that a little bit today for our Helium News. Uh, don't go away. Let's, let's jump into that and see what's going on. And this morning, waiting for the 5G list to go up. We already have three spaces that we've, that we've got on the waiting list because of the CalChip Connect. Uh, agreement. Let's hope that they honor that. I uh, haven't been real pro Calchip Connect either lately. And let's see if we can pick up a couple more spaces. Let's try to pick up a couple more so we can try to pick up five of these hot spots and, um, and maybe the indoors for $1,500. And, and then maybe we'll see see how that works out. And hopefully that investment doesn't come back to bite us in the <clears throat> derriere. But let's talk about what we found yesterday that gave me more confidence today in the 5G network with Helium. All right, so let's just jump right into the story. Right now, we're waiting for the Freedom Fi 5G waitlist. You have the waitlist opens at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, today is November 2nd. It's got 20,000 hot spots you can be able to res reserve. Remember, the goal the goal is to have around uh, 40,000 by the end of next year of the 5G hot spots in the United States, at least, set up. Um, you deposit amount to $99. I'd like the last time too, you can $99, that's refundable. Shipping gonna start till January. So it'll start in January and they'll be completed by May of 2022. The gateways, the distant gateways going in, you're looking at $1,000. Uh, if your indoor cell, which is your target price, is $1,400, $1,500. Now I'm understanding that you're gonna have to buy the gateway and you're gonna have to buy the indoor or outdoor cell, which the indoor cell is $1,500, the outdoor cell is $2,500. Very expensive, actually. So you have to buy the gateway, which would be like the, the regular helium hotspot we're buying today, but specifically for 5G. Then you got to buy this um, other device that goes along with it that actually creates and allows the connection on the 5G network. So you're talking a minimum of $2,500 per order um, from the way I'm understanding this. And for your indoors, your outdoors are going to be uh, $3,500. So a little steep going in. And this is why my whole <clears throat> feelings of the fact that with Dish Network coming on board, would they be able to walk out in the backyard of where I'm staying here right now? And you see a dish on this house, a dish on that house, a dish on this house, dish across the street. So actually, at what point is Dish Network going to facilitate the 5G network? Is it going to be through their dishes? through their satellite, uh, what, what's the agreement? Well, just in fact, yesterday afternoon or evening, I got this email um, notifying me of the actual waiting wait list reopening today. And so we've got a little time, so we're gonna record right now, then we're gonna jump on the wait list, and then I'm actually going to take my daughter around the Lake Tahoe area and spend a little time with her in the state of Nevada as we're in today. Um, so let's jump in here real quick. I'm just gonna read through some of this. I won't take long this morning. This is our Helium News today. I think this is important for Helium News because this this will actually grow Helium. If you look at Helium, Helium was like, what, $28 yesterday. We bought into, I bought into Helium. Oh, during, not too long ago, actually. Let's just say it was like an, in, oh, May, June, somewhere around there, bought into Helium. So I got it a lot cheaper. And now we're $28. So you can see the Helium coin price is growing. And that will continue to grow with all these, these great alliances Helium is actually doing. I'm really bullish on Helium and the Helium project. Not so such a fan of the fact that they're kind of getting away from the people's network and going corporate and they'll go that way, I think, if they need to. Regulation probably going to come out today, be signed today in Congress, which is completely something that to me is completely corrupt. Um, when you're in democracy, you had dates where that was supposed to be voted on. But even Nancy Pelosi said that, look, if we vote it, vote it now, it won't get passed. we got to pass this bill. Well, you don't wait until you can negotiate things. And that's kind of signs of corruption, if you will. 
then then once you got it down, you know, once you made made your deals under the table behind the scenes, then you can vote on it. Well, today I think we're going to get slammed with new cryptocurrency laws uh, in the United States, and that's going to affect us worldwide. FATF is already starting to come on down. It's to come down on the actual. Uh, they're going to come down on the, the stable coins, which is it's it's all just smoke and mirrors. It's all about control. So please don't be fooled by regulation. Thing that's going to help us again. Do your history uh, and read and look how the banking industry was regulated and what the banking industry is today and who controls that. Do we? No. Do we control our bank accounts? No. We're abused all the time. We're told what we can have. My, I've had three accounts closed on me just because they didn't like my money after 10 years of dealing business and the same income stream and they just close it. Now, I never lost a lot of money. Maybe the most I ever lost was five to $7,000. But still, that's a good chunk of change and, and they, the banks do that to you know, a few million people every year. That's a pretty good industry. Anyway, let's jump into what we got here. I'm going to read this, okay, right from DISH, what, what DISH is saying so that you guys can get an idea on this. And that's what I want to talk about today. I think we're still bullish on helium. Uh, just as a side note, as you saw, Planet Watch came out with their KYC, their extreme KYC. And I know this is not helium news, but I kind of want to throw that in there. can carry on from yesterday a little bit. And you know, you know, you know but since they came out with their KYC, boom, Planet Watch took a hit um, at their, with their well. It's not a huge hit. If you look at the graph, they're going to see that they, the, the people do not like this KYC. Uh, you've got a lot of people that are, okay, that's fine, especially in Latin America. They don't understand the difference. They're new to crypto. All they're into it for is the money anyway. They're not really into it for the network. It's like, and that's the fear I have with helium. Many people are just into it for the money. I know we hooked, we hooked them on a hotspot at, um, at this house we're at here now. And um, this hotspot hooked up. We're, trying, we're having a hard time. We're having a hard time hooking up this hotspot. And that's, that's one of the, the newer ones that we talked about that we received this last week. Uh, just for some reason, it's just not sinking. And, 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 and I got issues around us too. You can see the hotspots are hooked up and they're getting no HNT whatsoever. So you can see that there's just lack of uh, understanding in the crypto world as far as when we get these devices, uh, do we want them to actually help the network or do we want them just to make money? Well, it's good to make money, but we also need to think about the network and not just the money. So I understand both sides of it. But um, so the Planet Watch took a hit. Um, they took a little spanking for their KYC. And this is good. I hope they continue to take one because they sort of let that have been voted on by the community. They pretty much jumped in as a dictator saying it's a community community, jumped in as a dictator saying, now actually it's not, we're going to do this, this, and this, and you have to do it. If you don't do it, then you cannot access your, your coins or your tokens, or can you access um, any more be able to mine, or in other words, generate a, a, it's not even really mining, generate a, a compensation for it. So keep that in mind, Planet Watch, the people didn't like your decision. We need to be in control. If you want to be in the crypto world, then we're the, we the people are in control. If you want to be in the digital world, which you are now officially in the digital world, and that's the difference between the two, the virtual crypto world, the community controls it. If you want to be digital, it's privately controlled and closely held. That is digital. So that's the main difference between the two. Let's jump into this. Look at this. Dish to use Helium's DIY 5G network. Okay, here we go. This network said it plans to use the 5G network that the startup Helium is creating to set the stage for the DISH expansion, the 5G coverage onto the network built by Helium's customers. So that was going to be us, right? Uh, Helium's customers. So they plan on using the network from this, I'm understanding here now, which is clarity from yesterday, from going into what I could find since the announcement last week, that this DISH network would form an alliance. And it's really a little bit different alliance than what many are out there saying. It's more of a backup uh, Helium's network is going to be more of a backup for DISH because they have to provide a higher grade or, or more expansive um, type of 5G system. Read on here. Look here. The more potential, I'm sorry, the move potentially puts more focus on Helium's efforts to finance the construction of the wireless network's infrastructure owned and operated by its customers who are paid with cryptocurrency, okay, Helium. But more broadly, the deal between DISH and Helium helps to upend the traditional network build-out, the model, whereby one company tightly controls the construction and design of a wireless network. Instead, Helium pays its users in the cryptocurrencies we know, right? Installing and operating for the transmitters if, uh, for its network. Payments are generated by the traffic flowing over that network. Okay, this stuff we know about Helium. 
Here's what I want to get to. And, 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 and this is a quote here. As we build out DISH's 5G facilities, base network, we will continue to look for innovative technologies and business models that complete or support our wireless business. Okay, so they're going to look for others as well to, 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 to structure their 5G system. This is DISH, right? Explain Chris Ergen, head of the DISH Office of, of Innovation, in a release, a press release. Putting things into context. Okay, here we go. At least for now, the helium-powered element of DISH's forthcoming 5G network will likely be minuscule. You see, it's not as big as what a lot of YouTubers are saying it to be. Based on his 2019 agreement with T-Mobile and the U.S. Department of Justice, apparently there was an issue there, DISH is on the hook to begin providing commercial 5G services across significant portions of the country, the United States, starting next year. This is going to go into 2022. Already the company has been hiring hundreds of technicians to handle that work, which involves installing radios capable of broadcasting DISH's 5G signal atop potentially thousands of massive cell towers all over the country. So you see, there we go. So they're going to build onto their cell towers that already exist throughout the country to provide a 5G system. We are going to have these hot spots in our homes providing a 5G system. So you're going to have this double 5G system. So I think a lot of people are thinking, well, this 5G system is going to be used to, to provide a cell system. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think Helium's model is going to continue with, uh, as it is, but with 5G. They can provide. I think you're going to see here that there is a carry that's going to provide 5G. But this is going to be more of a backup, I think, from my understanding now, uh, for DISH and their, and their T-Mobile uh, provision than it is to be a primary source, which is still good for Helium. Uh, but it's not the principal source 5G, for the 5G system for DISH. Here we go. Let's, let's read on here. And I'm reading this because I couldn't put this any better. All right. So today, the company is working to implement a similar crypto-based DIY network build-out using 5G equipment of FreedomFi running in the unlicensed 3.5 gigahertz CBRS spectrum band. FreedomFi currently shipping out its first batch of 20,000 CBRs CBRS's small cells for the effort. So you see, we're going to get the hotspot, then we're going to get the CBRS small cells that put the two together, and that's going to provide the 5G coverage. Listen here. Under this agreement with Helium, this is potential 5G customers will be able to roam onto those Helium CBRS's hotspots. However, based on the relatively diminutive coverage capabilities of Helium CBRS hotspots, because it's small, right? And going in next year, we're going to have 40,000 throughout the whole country. That's the goal. It is likely that Helium's 5G network won't be able to cover the broad geographical areas that DISH is required to cover under its agreement with the DOJ. That's likely the DISH's, that DISH's that's likely why DISH's Ergen said the Helium network will complement or support DISH's existing network build-out. Okay, so it's going to be a complement or support, not a main build-out. So, is there going to be a competition between that 5G and Helium's 5G? Well, that's yet to be seen. Will, will there be a competition as for this Helium Pay um, dish? It's looking to me like no. Looks like this is going to be a customer using as other customers. And the ones that will get paid are those are going to be providing the cells, investing the money as we are, the people. So I have to then, that looks more clear than what yesterday I was was thinking was taking place uh, from other things I was reading, but I couldn't find clarity. And it just happened to be that yesterday evening, they sent me this email and there's clarity, right? What I read before wasn't this clear. I'm going to just read the rest here to, to finish this off. All right. Nonetheless, the fact that this is part of Helium certainly reflects the company's willingness to engage in new business models and network designs. But that comes as a little surprise considering Dish's 5G build-out plan is much much different than those employed by the likes of AT&T and Verizon. Now, remember, there were rumors of talks of AT&T with Helium as well. So we'll see if maybe that the Helium doesn't serve as a backup system for AT&T as well as maybe Verizon or others. Okay, we'll let's see if that comes down the road or not. Right now, we know that DISH is going to play a role for T-Mobile and a backup is going to be Helium. So that's good for Helium. It's not a principle, though, which could be better for Helium. But again, the build-out is slower. As I was mentioning yesterday, that's one of the reasons why I think Helium is going with the corporate 
movement is because there's so much competition out there. And in the 5G, not necessarily with Amazon, but I wouldn't count Amazon out of this. I've heard rumors, but I wouldn't count them out as well as other competitors in the 5G that want to completely dominate the system. And we know that whoever owns 5G owns the world. That's kind of what the saying is out there. And, and there's some danger to 5G, which is another video. But um, this is where we are with Helium. So let's continue here. Pacific Dish is purchasing 5G radios from Taiwan's Microelectronics Technology, MTI, and Japan's Fujitsu. Vendors that are a far cry from Nokia's, Ericsson's, and Samsung's that supply the established 5G network operators in the U.S. Further, Dish plans to run all of its network functions inside the Amazon Web Service Cloud. You see, here we go with that 5G system, right? Another dramatic departure from the norm. Amazon is that move that wants to dominate everything. So you have Amazon and Twitter. Twitter's even jumping into the game, um, which we need to be careful of and be careful of do we continue to support them. As you know, Amazon's going to come out with a whole new system. It's a virtual reality system. That, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, that's Facebook. Facebook's going to come out with a whole new system. So you got Amazon, Facebook, and Twitter that want to dominate every aspect of, of, of our lives, really, in censoring, et cetera. And we, we know that's not a lie. But that's, they're not hiding that. So it's something we got to be careful of going down the road. And this is why I think Helium, because that competition is strong, Helium is partnering with a bunch of people to try to expand the network, which does take some of this away from the people's network and some things they've done. Um, however, at the end of the day, it looks as if these 5G hotspots will depend on you and I putting them in our homes, which was my concern yesterday's video. So here we go. Thus... So as we finish up here, nothing. nonetheless, the fact that Dish is partnering with Helium certainly reflects the company's willingness to engage in new business models. We read, okay, and to build out their, their systems. Okay, we just read all that. Thus, Dish's agreement with Helium could be viewed as a hedge, okay, if Helium is successful. So the success then looks like it depends on us. So I think this is the answer I was looking for yesterday, my concern. Helium's, if Helium is not, this can continue to proceed along with the 5G build-up path. It's already on. Okay? And there's other articles you can read here. I'm not going to go into it. I just want to get to the fact today at Helium News that it looks as if the 5G network is going to be built on our backs, which is good. So I'm going to jump on here in another 40-something minutes, and I'm going to reserve two more because these are going to be expensive coming in. It's going to be $2,500 a bang starting in January. So I know that we're on a the three we have on the list that we bought through um, in the deal that we got with, with Calchip Connect. Let's see if they honor that or not. So I'll have three of those and then two more of these. I'm going to have to come up with some, some, some funds to invest going into 5G coming the first part of the year. And that's just after Christmas holidays, etc. So I think two more. I think we're going to go five to experiment and then we'll see where it goes from there. If prices rise or low, lower. There's, you know, there's not a, it's, it's, it's very expensive, but there's not a lot going, being, being offered. You're talking 20,000 more right now. So that's going to be it probably until next year. So I'm trying to jump on these. Anyway, Helium News. Very bullish on Helium. Helium is making a lot of aggressive moves. I see why they're doing things. Disappointed in some of it. Uh, but as this clarity comes in with the 5G, my, my concern was, do we get invested in this? We're going to go ahead and invest more. It looks like, to me, I feel comfortable with it here at DeFi IoT Latin America. And we're going to go ahead and go forward with this. We'll keep you posted as we go move along. This is our Helium News today. Kind of brief to the point on Helium. Um, if the side note of Planet Watch, we'll see what happens today in Congress. Looks like it's going to pass the law in the United States which is sad. It's just really sad because once they do that, it's going to be a, it's going to have this domino effect in other countries. So we'll see who's going to withstand. Let's hope that, that the governor Abbott can maintain in Texas as well. Looks like there's something shady going on there too. Um, it's with this election coming up. The polls apparently came in. By the way, don't believe polls, um, as we learned that from the past, right? So hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, stay with us. We we're gonna we're gonna walk through this. We're gonna research this. Remember, we are not financial advisors. Everything we do is our through our own experience. We do this to try to help you to strengthen the crypto world. We want the cryptocurrency and DeFi to continue to exist. We see that as the future of freedom. And outside of the controls, they're now trying to crush us under the Davos, the World Economic Forum agenda, along with the United Nations, et cetera. It's a real agenda. FATF's all part of this. World Bank's part of this whole thing. Our country now, this administration's part of it. So everybody hated Trump 
I didn't vote for Trump, but I tell you, if I could go back again, I would do it now. Um, I didn't vote for this current administration either. I want to make that clear. Um, so, you know, I believe in our Constitution in the United States of America, and I believe in freedom and free markets because I've seen what that's for poverty, and I came out of poverty is because I had the opportunity. Nobody controlled what I could do. I was able to create my own ideas, and, you know, I've changed my career three times now. I had the opportunity to do that when I was in Cuba, when I was in China and so forth. You didn't have those opportunities. I, I was able to study these countries uh, under certain uh, restrictions and so forth. But I was able to do these studies and talk to people. And I know what it's like to be under this kind of, this kind of governance, live 20 years outside of my country in socialist and communist countries. And I've studied for 20 years in these countries as well. So let's defend DeFi, please. Stay with us. Subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, write to us. What else do you want to hear? DeFi, IoT, Latin America. Let's jump on the 5G and let's see if we can support helium, huh?